Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And Juji Mufu has made a video, very tactfully made video, more or less calling out all of the YouTube fitness industry. So let me put on my plus five hat of weaponsmithing, work on skilling up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Now, a lot of people say, well, Jason, he was really playful with it, and tons of other channels came in, and they, they thought it was funny and well done, and it was funny and well done. Uh, but what I appreciate about it was the underlying tone. Yes, it was done in a playful manner. It was done very tactfully uh, in a way that, that the people he discussed wouldn't feel insulted for the most part. And you can tell he genuinely likes some of these people. You can tell that he actually does like some of them, and it shows through with the way that he portrayed some of them. But the beauty of it is, is that when you understand kind of who he is, it's, he is not a fluff and pump guy. Yeah, he's an entertainer, but this is a guy who you can tell his entire life revolves around strength. Uh, functional fitness performance that that is very much a lifestyle for him uh, it is a, very much a lifestyle for him uh, and again he's an entertainer uh, seems to be by profession but ultimately train training and hard training and being strong in a plethora of ways uh, you can tell is very much an important part of who he is because you don't build a home gym like Juji has or John Cole you don't build a home gym like he has and do everything from power training to strength training and all this other stuff unless you're, you're really serious about that as a serious endeavor that is uh, intrinsic to your being. And a lot of these other channels, they really aren't. They, they are all style and no substance. And that's what you could tell he was hinting at and he did it in such a tactful way that people didn't realize that a lot of them were legitimately being insulted. They were being insulted for what they do. And I think the thing is, when you look at it, I think what he really pointed out, and again, in a very tactful manner, is that that's exactly what we're dealing with. That YouTube fitness has turned into nothing but marketing, all style, no substance. And that a lot of these people really have nothing more to offer. Right. In other words, you could go watch. I mean, I could go watch someone who, who has a good understanding of movement patterns, training, programming, things like that. I could take any of these channels, pick five at random, and I could probably go watch their last 10 videos they've put up and probably not see much of anything that would be useful for either a first year lifter or even a more advanced lifter trying to get somewhere with their goals. You don't actually see much of value in there. There's a lot of marketing. It's a lot about selling supplements. A lot about selling supplements. A lot about selling merchandise. A lot of stuff about social media. And again, all this stuff teaching you how to be influencers and everything else. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty, a lot of these guys don't even have any real knowledge. Uh, what a lot of them know how to do it's fluff and pump and trend and clan. Okay, that's what they know. And it's very apparent when you watch a lot of them because a lot of them don't even know how to perform basic exercises. And there are definitely exceptions in there. But you better step through and watch. I mean, you look at the way a lot of these people train and you know 10 years from now they're not going to still be in the game. All right, they're not going to be in the game still. All right, John Call, for example, he's, he's been lifting a long time. He's not someone who just picked up uh, the barbell five years ago. Uh, that's a guy with at minimum, minimum of 15 years of actual real training experience. Yet he's walking around athletic and uninjured. I want people to think about it. How many of your favorite fitness YouTubers are really going to be there? How many of the guys who six or seven years ago were really strong up and coming channels, they still don't have it. They're hurt. They're busted up. They're hurt and busted up and they don't even train that hard. All right, that should be telling people something because when you start watching a lot of these people, yeah, they can talk to you about their cars, their lifestyle, their day of eating, their music intros, talk to you about social media, they can talk to you about their newest pre-workout that they can either give you a discount code for that they use, but when you watch them perform exercises, it's very apparent these people don't even know the basics. They're, they're getting there with Trent and Clint, guys. There's a reason they look how they do. Not because they know anything about training. Because you watch 
And you watch a lot of them bench press. They don't even know how to bench press without causing shoulder impingement or internal rotation, pec tears, things like that. You watch it. They don't actually know how to do it. And a bench press is a very simple exercise, or even worse. You'll see them do various overhead pressing. None of them have any clue about moment arms. They have no clue about bar pass uh, to reduce stress on the shoulder joint. They have no clue what even causes shoulder impingement on overhead pressing because you watch them and most of them go through a bar path that, that I know, John, that John Call knows watching. It's going to cause shoulder impingement eventually. It might take them another five years. Eventually, their shoulders are going to be beat up, and it's not because there's anything wrong with overhead pressing. Most of them don't know how to perform a press. They literally don't know how to perform an overhead press and actually get all the muscles they want to train and avoid damaging the shoulder. They're clueless. They don't understand the basic movement patterns. They really don't. Uh, and then when a lot of them, when you get over their lower body lifts, they're still at novice and intermediate numbers. And these are people who are supposed to be, be teaching you. You know, they'll talk about, well, I've been training my legs for seven years straight. They, they squat 315 for three reps and they can't even hit depth. I'm just saying, there's examples out there. Watch them try to deadlift. They, they don't actually know how to perform a deadlift. They don't even know what an efficient bar path is on a deadlift. They don't even know how to reduce stress on the lower back by using the correct bar path. They don't even know how to avoid herniating discs while deadlifting. Because there's been a few big fitness YouTubers who've herniated discs. They've hurt their lower backs. And they're not that old, guys. These guys are still in their 20s. Late 20s, and they already have herniated discs from deadlifting. That is a perfectly safe exercise. And these are people giving training advice. These are people giving you advice. And that's the, the scary part, though, is how vapid all of it has become. It's really become YouTube fitness is not about fitness. It's now fitness entertainment, not fitness education. And it's sad because people who really do know what they're talking about, they struggle to get the biggest outreaches. They struggle to get the biggest outreaches. There's some exceptions. Okay, Alan Thrall's done pretty good, and I would say Alan Thrall's a pretty smart guy when it comes to overall training programming and movement patterns. Not a bad person to listen to. But he certainly doesn't look the part, does he? He doesn't look like a guy who's on training Quinn. I legitimately think Alan Thrall is natural, but a lot of these guys aren't. They don't have any training knowledge. I mean, like he even joked about Christian Guzman. I mean, Guzman's a perfect example of someone he doesn't really know how to train. He really doesn't. Watch him. He really doesn't know what he's doing. But he's got the flashy cars and the music, and he promotes lifestyle and his supplements. And the funny thing is, you can tell every time he goes off cycle. Yeah, you guys can tell when Guzman is on gear and when he comes off. And people say, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you said that, Jason. He's not that big. Yeah, he's tiny as fuck. He's a little bitty sucked up shrimp. I could fit him probably on one of my thighs. But that's besides the point. You can tell when he goes on and when he comes off. It's through everyone who knows anything about gear, you can tell when Guzman cycles off. It's blaringly obvious to the point of hilarity. To the point of hilarity that when someone says that they don't even see him go on and off, that they can't tell. Oh, yeah, he's off cycle right now. You can't tell. Man, you're not even qualified to discuss gear if you can't tell by that guy immediately when he goes on and off because he, he's all drugs. He doesn't know how to trade. But that's a perfect example. But he sells lifestyle. He doesn't even give you guys anything useful. You know, he'll get you on his summer shredding. Uh, but, you know, this is what we're dealing with, guys. This is what we're dealing with. It's become entertainment. And yeah, I do my own entertainment, but you guys know I do two informative videos every day. I do all document all my training, all that stuff. Um, but we discuss a lot of this stuff, and then that's the other end of it. You know, it's like you get a lot of guys, they want to go deep into the science, and that's your other extreme. Uh, science overload without a practical application. Meaning these are people who want to get so involved in the minutia of the science, and, and they, it does good because they'll get some experts on I mean, Jeff Nippert's an example. I don't really follow his channel, but I've seen some of the stuff, and he does get some, some interesting experts on, and they get some debate and everything going, but we get to a point where some of that to where we're losing the practical application at a certain threshold when people go so far into the science that we're now just talking about theoreticals. Exercise science and, and sports nutrition are applied sciences. What you are talking about has to work in a real athlete in a competitive environment. 
you've got to be very careful about delving too far into hypotheticals that aren't going to help people or they can get so far into the minutia that people will focus on that the stuff that's going to give you that last one percent that last one percent is what you're going to get from it but these are people that, who will go so far into the minutia that they'll cover that so much that people aren't even following the basics who are watching it they, people can lead you down a whole other road uh, to not making gains or progress either because you get so focused on these little minutia trying to glean that half percent that you don't bother to do the stuff correctly that gives you the first 50% or 80% of your gains. You don't even get that right and they delve into the minutia. You know, and that's where it gets crazy. All these people will be more than happy to sell you their supplement stack. They'll show you their day of eating, but then you watch and, and they don't know how to even stop shoulder impingement on an overhead press. They can't explain to you <laughs> what a mesocycle is in your training programming. Hell, some of them don't even know the difference. They don't even know the difference between linear and concurrent periodization. And they get the terms mixed up because they're not even brushed up on basic training programming. Oh, well, this is conjugate periodization. Is, it really, is that conjugate periodization? Or did you just steal that word from West side? No, that's concurrent. You're doing concurrent training, but that's the thing. They don't even know that. They don't know. They don't even understand the principle. They don't even understand the principle behind why concurrent training works the way that it does. They don't understand the difference of why DUP, which gets popularized all on here, is uh, not actually any better. None of the data has ever shown it to have any benefits over normal concurrent periodization with only two rep ranges used per week. So that's a problem, guys. This is a problem. When you have all these personalities, this cult of personalities up here who everyone is listening to, who don't know this basic stuff that you should probably know before you coach another person, they don't even know this stuff. And then we watch and then they all start getting hurt. They all burn out. Well, it could be because they, they never learned the basics of training and they just know how to reach for that trend eat that there trend bologna sandwiches and that's a problem and I, that's what i think he highlighted really well and again he did it in an entertaining fashion is the amount of shallowness and vapidness all of this style but no substance they're leaving you nothing of value other than some entertainment and that's the crazy part is how obsessed people get with the lives of youtubers um, I mean, I deal with my own extremes of that with my own stalking and people literally asking me, you know, uh, what's going on with my relationships and this and that. It's like, wow, God, you guys really care about what's going on with me and my girlfriend. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird, guys. We're just YouTubers. But I think a lot of it is because so many of these people advertise their entire life as a blog. It's a big vlog for everyone to see, at least what they want you to see of it. If they promote that, that it becomes people's entertainment. And then at the end of the day, they don't really offer you anything of value. It, it ends up being no different than watching your favorite sitcom on TV. That's not helping people. It's not helping people reach their goals. It's not helping people keep the right mindset to get to their goals. Before long, it starts becoming about your cars and your pre-workout instead of learning a basic movement pattern, how to fact and fix it correctly, how to look at your one of your big basic lifts and see where your weaknesses are and what you need to correct on it uh, to improve to either not get yourself hurt or to gain size and strength. And the channels that do that best, they don't get a whole lot of views, do they? Because those of us who know, we know who they are. We know who they are. They're out there. Most of those channels struggle to hit 100,000 subscribers, and if they do, it takes them eight years to get there. The exception might be Alan Thrall, just because he's got enough of a spin on it, enough of an entertainment value with his own image and the untamed strength and the funny voices and the big beard to still pull in an audience. One of the very few who pulls it off. And everyone else is just about this vapidness and then um, again compromising their own values and their own information just to collab with other people and be friends with everyone oh, Mark is off and then their own training starts going to crap 
that's what's going on guys and I like the fact that a bigger channel like Juji uh, kind of called it out but he did so in a way to not offend people but you can tell it's there and the title again even though he pretends like it's just clickbait there again good tactic I think it speaks volumes because that's the difference Juji actually is the real deal he, he's a legitimate lifter he's a legitimate athlete with a lot of experience and again, you can look at the way he's got his home gym set up and you can tell that. It's, it's, apparent, it's very apparent. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.